Being underwater is uh, honestly like being in the, in the Avatar world, being on Pandora or something. The life that you see, the corals, focusing on those small things, it's not like anything that you can see on land. I've talked to people forever that just say, I don't know why I just feel so special here. It's just very tranquil and around every corner is something more beautiful and breathtaking. I wanted to bring back the famous, what we call East Bay Oyster, that's called East Bay Oyster. And my hope was to create an industry, kind of like a Napa Valley here, up here in the northern part of the Gulf, which has always been known for great oysters. A lot of people know about the larger cities here in Florida. They know about the bigger cities in Florida, but they may not know about the Gulf Coast, and they may not know about Northwest Florida. And Pensacola, I think, has a little bit of everything to offer. Having experienced the wonders of North Florida from above and below, we head on west along the scenic coast towards South Walton to explore one-of-a-kind adventures under the sea. Growing up along the uh, shores of South Walton here, the water has always been important to me. I started diving when I was 12 years old. The water just opened me up. Used to go swimming, made my own little uh, pole spear and everything, and we'd swim around for three or four hours, and if we saw two fish, oh man, it was a great day. Now you can go out there and get surrounded by an entire school of fish. Uh, I've had manatees swim right by me, giant manta rays, uh, spotted eagle rays, huge sea turtles. Um, and sometimes there's two or three sea turtles right in the same spot, and they're curious about me. They're curious about us. It's, uh, it's really, really magical to uh, be out there and interact with the marine life. My name is Walt Hartley, and I am the president of the South Walton Artificial Reef Association. Most of our sea bottom is barren sand flats. Um, it's like the Sahara Desert down there. So any sort of structure that gets deployed immediately starts to attract fish and help create habitat for our fisheries. Each of Suarez's four snorkel reefs here in South Walton County are arranged in different shapes. One is a sea turtle, one is a fish, one is a seahorse, and one is in the shape of a dolphin. We have deployed well over a thousand individual reef modules um, across about 14 different locations. There are four snorkel reefs here in South Walton County, and there are nine nearshore fish dive reefs, all about a mile offshore, um, close to about 60, 70 feet of water. And that also includes the world famous Underwater Museum of Art. So the Underwater Museum of Art is uh, kind of my baby. I was inspired by what uh, South Walton Artificial Reef was doing, deploying reefs all up and down the coast here. So once I saw that, I was like, why aren't we deploying sculptures? I am Allison Wiki. I've been a local artist here in Santa Rosa Beach for about 15 years. We have created this underwater museum of art, which is about almost a mile offshore, just off of Grayton Beach, and is a scuba diving spot. The purpose of these reefs, in addition to creating new habitat and uh, kind of building ecosystems for our marine environment, is also to create opportunities for the community, both economic and recreational. 
This is uh, an activity that you can go out and do and have a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, the first time that you see a sea turtle or a giant manta ray and it's just right there off the beach. It's fantastic and it will change your life. Being underwater is uh, honestly like, like being in the, in the avatar world, um, being, being on Pandora or something. The life that you see, the corals, focusing on those small things. It's not like anything that you can see on land. Getting under the water and being able to go beneath the waves, it's, uh, it's really a totally different world. And to have some sort of influence in what is happening on that sea bottom, um, to be able to contribute to the creation of new habitats um, and helping to build sustainability in our area, um, that's, that's definitely something that I'm passionate about. One of the very best things to do here in Walton County is to get a kayak or a paddleboard, head out in the morning, I like to do that so it's not too windy, and kind of hug the coast along this lake. You can see deer and fox or bobcats and make your way through as it winds through the dunes. It's just, you won't see anything like it anywhere else in the world. The dunes are this pristine white sand, which is also quartz, so we're actually standing on a giant crystal. The juxtaposition of the white sand dunes overlooking the Gulf of Mexico is just breathtaking. And when you're on Western Lake and you look over and see the white dunes, some people think it looks like snow. I've been here for 15 years and I came here because it, it was just an opportunity to move, but we stayed for the people and this place really has a magic to it, you know? And I've talked to people forever that just say, I don't know why I just feel so special here. It's just very tranquil and around every corner is something more beautiful and breathtaking. It's just a place to come and relax and reflect and just see pure natural beauty. Throughout its history, Pensacola has been ruled by many. So it's no surprise that this seaport community has a vibrant abundance of food, arts, and culture. But as we enter the city of Five Flags, we also discover some of the state's most beautiful beaches, thrilling aerial maneuvers, and some of the best homegrown oysters around. Well, Pensacola is, has a beautiful bay system, a very deep bay system. The proximity to the Gulf make the estuary a prime location to grow oysters. So we started farming oysters here five years ago, and we found that we can really grow a perfect oyster in this estuary. My name's Donnie McMahon, and I own Pensacola Bay Oyster Company, an oyster farm here in Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola Bay Oyster Company is an oyster farm. We have two five-acre leases here in the Florida waters. We sell them to local restaurants. We also sell them wholesale around the southeast. We used to have quite an abundance of wild oysters here that have kind of disappeared. So I wanted to bring back the famous, what we call East Bay Oyster, Pensacola East Bay Oyster. And um, my hope was to create an industry, kind of like a Napa Valley here, up here in the northern part of the Gulf, which has always been known for great oysters. Typically, our guys get out here at 6.30 or 7 in the morning. Uh, they'll run to the farm. It's about a six mile run. Uh, if they're splitting, they'll stay there all day. If they're harvesting, they'll collect. We use a, a cage system. They, developed out of Canada called Oyster Grow. It's a floating cage, so the oysters will filter feed and grow. We can raise them from spawn to harvest in a little, little over a year. The restaurateurs love the consistency of the size and shape and the clean look of what these farmed oysters are all about. I source my oysters from Pensacola Bay Oyster Company when I can. Uh, Donnie's been through hell and high water so he, he pays attention to detail on his oysters and that's what we're looking for is the perfect oyster. My name is Irv Miller, I'm the founding executive chef of Jackson Steakhouse, been here since uh, 1999. 
For me, the best way to enjoy oysters is in its purest form. Perfect oyster out of the water with a perfect salinity level and a nice salty bay and a miso clean finish, sweet, uh, is the perfect oyster. And I have to take one bite at least because I wanna, I wanna feel the oyster, I wanna taste the juice inside the oyster, not just in the shell. With farmed oysters, what makes them different is, is in that bag, uh, as they roll around, instead of getting real long, they get real plump, they get real fat, versus a wild oyster that's typically longer and thicker and harder to open. These oysters are so vital to our cuisine in the area, and folks like Donnie have really stuck with it and brought it back, and my hat's off to you, Donnie. And he has one of the most delicious oysters. I have tried to, to elevate the oyster experience in general because uh, like Donnie McMahon, uh, we want to leave our legacy, which is, for me, is, is to say, hey, this is what's going on right now with oysters. You know, the oyster is a keystone species and we want to make sure that it stays forever, long after we're gone. When I went to Florida State, it was like, God, if someday, somehow, I could do something, I could make a difference, you know? And I think everybody wants to make a difference, but they don't know how to do it individually. And so when I got into this oyster business um, and saw what actually these things do, other than create a business and create jobs, is what, what it's all about. Building a blue economy is what we call it. But to be able to, to get the positive impact on the environment is an amazing thing. A lot of people know about the larger cities here in Florida. They know about the bigger cities in Florida, but they may not know about the Gulf Coast, and they may not know about Northwest Florida. And Pensacola, I think, has a little bit of everything to offer. My name is Nicole Stacy, and I'm a native of Pensacola, Florida. I went to school here in Pensacola at the University of West Florida. I'm a graduate here, and I decided to stay. I love the beaches. I love the quartz white sand. It's so soft and the clear crystal blue water that you can see straight to the bottom. But it's really something about the people here. We've got a big city vibe, but with a small town beach community. I know that I can go into the local grocery store and see people that I know and love, but I also know that I can catch the next performance at the ballet or at the opera or at the theater or I can go to the beach and just enjoy a bushwhacker or the best oysters in town and connect with our chefs and just talk to them about what did you catch today and what are we cooking on the menu? Well, Pensacola is very special. It has been fought over uh, by various European powers, the Spanish, the British, the French, and then the Americans in 1821 when they came and took over Pensacola as part of Florida. It was Florida's first capital. Uh, we've got historic structures, we've got archaeology that's below our feet that goes back to those times, these historic structures that date back to the colonial period pre-becoming part of the United States. Well, when you come to Pensacola, what your experience will be is coming into a community that has vibrancy with food, with culture, with the arts, and with history. My name is Robert Overton. I'm the executive director of the University of West Florida Historic Trust, and we manage Historic Pensacola Village. Historic Pensacola Village is a collection of 15 historic homes and buildings in downtown Pensacola that is a living history experience. Uh, visitors come in, they get to go inside historic houses spanning from as early as 1805 up until the mid 20th century. Uh, they get to engage with historic interpreters in costume who take on persona of various historic figures, talk about the way of life and the time period that they're doing, focus on colonial history, we move on up, even in the 1920s. Uh, so it is an outdoor, indoor experience that takes a collection of great buildings and really tells the story of Pensacola's history. The other thing that really makes Pensacola special is from its beginning, it was a very diverse multi-ethnic settlement. We have always been a multi-ethnic seaport community and the diversity of our people helps influence the diversity of our, historic, our history and our stories that we tell. So it's, a, it, it's really a very small international city. Fort Pickens is really special. It's a pre-Civil War fort. There's ranger-led programs here. And you can walk around and go through the forts. You can go through the tunnels. You can go through where 
the old uh, prisons were. You can walk through and up and down to the cannons. Uh, there's camping, there's fishing, there's biking, there's trails. The Naval Aviation Museum is one of the world's largest aviation museums. It also is home to the Blue Angels, which is our United States Navy Jet Squadron. They fly all over the world doing demonstrations for a recruiting effort. So on a clear, beautiful day here at Fort Pickens, you can definitely see the Blue Angels flying. And that's on Tuesdays and Wednesdays during the week, during their season. See these guys fly is incredible. Uh, and it really just kind of lights up the sky, but it also lights up the community because it's so special to say that this is their home. This is where they're from. This is an authentic Florida experience. Again, our history dating back 450 years. You can still see that. It breathes that in this community. Beautiful scenery. It's a great destination to come if you kind of want a more laid back experience that you've got all the amenities of the larger venues. And there's just something so special about the personality and the community here in Pensacola that it makes it unique, it makes it exciting, and it makes me really proud to live here. As we conclude our journey and look back on the places and people along the way, we realize that what makes an unforgettable trip are one-of-a-kind experiences that ignite a zeal for adventure and awaken us to the wonders of our natural world. Reminding us that sometimes the best vacations are those off the beaten path, where the passions run high and the sun shines brightest. So, as you plan ahead, set course for Florida and let your wanderlust guide you to the hidden gems of the Sunshine State.